First, let's look at the demographics and just the emerging middle class. In the case of India, you have a population of 1.3 billion people. 50% of those are under 25. And the way I like to bring that to life is to say, every month there are a million people who turn 18. And that is the market that is emerging. So just by the size and scale and the fact that they are middle class means there is scale. So they need support and providers, particularly in education because of the speed of the growth. So that's what we're starting with. When you move on from there, in the case of India, there's been so much reform, including, the, in, uh, including in the education sector. You're seeing that recently the government released its national education policy. And that policy has many ambitions one of which is to create a quality higher education sector. And the means by which they intend to do this is by inviting a hundred of the world's top universities to come into the country and partner with them as providers. So that will be a game changer. It will be up to the education providers from Australia to be in that game. So it is a once in a lifetime opportunity for the sector that can't be missed. And in the case of Sri Lanka, in that environment, what's happening right now is due to budget constraints, the government really is stretched and it is inviting uh, international education providers in, into the country to look at JVs because they just can't maintain the level of subsidies themselves for their higher education sector. But it is also a very strong and quite innovative market, market, which is crying out for partners. So Sri Lanka has that opportunity as well. The, the other area that we cannot forget, and, and actually we can't because everyone's in it, is long, online and edtech. That growth is just phenomenal and I can't begin to really explain all the, the, the individual opportunities. That's one I would suggest you speak to our specialists at Austrade because, in fact, the edtech sector by next year, by 2021, 2022, I'm sorry, will be worth $3.2 billion. That is a six-fold increase in quite a short period of time. Well, we have a, a range of initiatives that I'll talk to in one moment, but I did want to highlight that acknowledging that education is the flagship sector under the India Economic Strategy, we have recently appointed a dedicated high-level senior, uh, senior Trade and Investment Commissioner by the name of Dr Monica Kennedy, and she will lead our education team. And this is the first time we've had an education specialist in such a senior trade commissioner role. She will be leading a team of 10 business development managers that we have on the ground that look after not just India, but also Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, and those other countries in the South Asian region. So that's the base of what we do. Right now within that team and the work we're doing, we are leading the charge on the Study Australia India Digital Education Hub. We also have within that a Study Australia Employability Hub. Well, there's probably five in summary. We've got complexity, competitive market. You've got to find the right partner. You've got tax and regulatory frameworks to deal with, and it's price sensitive. And when I talk about complexity, it's like going into any new place that is a bit, a bit different. There are cultural sensitivities and complexities of uh, structures. So you just need to be mindful of that. You are not going from Australia to Australia. Competitiveness. The region, particularly India, is being courted by everybody. You've got Canada, you've got the US, you've got New Zealand, you've just got everybody wanting to be in this space and they are doing as well as us. We have a fabulous reputation for the quality of what we do, but so do others, so we cannot be complacent. And it's really important to find the right partners. Tax and regulatory framework. This is something, regardless of sector, that you must get the right advice on 
and take very, very seriously and do your own due diligence. Of course, Austrade can help in terms of sourcing partners for you, but it is incumbent on you to do that. And finally, price sensitivity. Size, scale also means the price factor comes into play just because of volume and again because it's competitive. We have a number of other very, very highly successful, highly reputable other nations that we're competing with. So we need to be mindful that our customers, our students have other choices. So be very mindful of that price sensitivity point.